Stop. Just stop. If you're learning to be a data analyst or data engineer, I know what you're doing. You probably have 20 tabs open in your browser and most of them about Python tutorials. And you're stuck in a tutorial hell. You're watching videos after videos and you still feel like you cannot build that one thing from scratch. I get it. It's intimidating, especially if you come from a non-tech background. And what if I told you that there is a much faster, more efficient way to learn Python, the one that real developers would use. Today, I'm going to show you the exact four step plan that I would personally use if I wanted to learn Python from zero starting now. First, let's be crystal clear on why Python is so important. It's not just another programming language. It is the language of data. Over 66% of respondents who are learning to code said that Python is the best language to get started with. In fact, if you look at LinkedIn right now for data engineering roles, there are over 190,000 open roles. And do you know how many of them require Python? More than 160,000 of them. So the message is clear. Learning Python is not just about learning to code, but it's about future proofing your career. So how do we do it fast? Step one, choose your workshop. Before even you write a single line of code, you need to select your workshop. You might have heard terms like IDEs and notebooks. Uh, in fact, if you talk about IDEs, one of my favorite ones are Cursor, Visual Studio Code, and IntelliJ IDEA. But keeping IDEs aside, if you're a beginner, even if you're just learning Python, there are only two things that you need to focus on. Number one is Jupyter Notebook. This is fantastic for data analysis. It lets you run in small chunks and see the outputs immediately. It's completely visual and interactive. Google Colab. This is basically your Jupyter Notebook, which we just saw, but on the cloud and it's powered by Google. The best part, there is zero setup required on your own laptop or PC. My advice, just pick Google Colab. It's free, it's simple, and it lets you get to the most important part very quickly, which is learning. Don't overthink on this step. Don't spend more than 10 minutes on it. Just set it up and move on. By the way, all the resources that I'm mentioning in this video are linked in the description, so don't forget to check it out. Step two is learn the bare minimum. This is where a lot of people fail, unfortunately, because people think that learning about Python is like memorizing every syntax out there. Trust me, nobody cares about this and nobody does this, not even senior engineers like me. We use ChatGPT and Google a lot when it comes to our day-to-day -day work. What you need to focus on is the 20% bare minimum part of Python that builds up 80% of languages. I'm talking about the absolute fundamentals. Number one, data types. So what's a string, what's an integer, list, dictionary, variables, how to store information, loops and conditional, the basic logic, whether it's for or if else or while loop or some other types of loops, functions, how do you create reusable blocks of code, file specific operations, how to read, write from different types of files and a little bit of core libraries like absolute basics of pandas for data frames and requests for grabbing data from the web. So how do you do this? By doing and not just by watching videos. And one of the best resources that I absolutely love to recommend to beginners, which is Automate the Boring Stuff with Python. It's a book that's available to read online for free. It teaches you Python by showing you how to build small practical things like searching websites, working with Excel sheets and sending emails as well. Read the first few chapters. Once you get the hang of the basics, stop and move to the next step. Our goal here is momentum, not 100% mastery. Step three, follow a guided path. Okay, so now you got your bare bones stuff down. If I could give one advice to anybody who's trying to break into data or analytics field, I would tell them this, that don't just look at endless tutorials or videos, but follow a guided path. Something like a hands-on roadmap for any skill that you're trying to learn. In this case, it's Python. This is why I keep recommending DataCamp. And I've been also using it for years to sharpen my Python and data skills. The Python Data Fundamentals track is the perfect launch pad if you want to learn Python for real world data work. It's not just videos, you're coding every step of the way, cleaning real data sets, making visualizations, and even running your own mini projects all inside your browser. What I love about this track is each course is practical and interactive. So you're actually learning job ready skills, not just copying code. And if you want to learn something that really sets you apart, you can validate those skills with DataCamp's industry recognized Python Data Associate certification, which is included with premium. And once you've got the fundamentals right, you can step up and take the next track, which is data engineer in Python. It will guide you through entire data engineering ecosystem, covering different things like interacting with databases, using SQL or live data with APIs, introduction to data pipeline tools like ELTs or ETLs, Airflow, PySpark, 
You will also learn software engineering best practices and Git tutorials. So if you are serious about learning Python and land a job, check out that uh, link in the description for DataCamp. I do wish that I had something like this, a completely structured path for Python when I was starting out, but at least you guys have it. Step four, build one thing. This is it. You will learn more by building a small project than spending, I don't know, 50 plus hours on tutorials. Trust me on this. And how do you start? Pick one project that's interesting to you. And I can give you an example. If you're interested in sports, there's one project like analyzing Olympic medal trends, which is about finding patterns in medal counts by country and sport over time and showcase it on the dashboard. There is a data set on Kaggle which contains 120 years of Olympic history. You will learn different skills like pandas and matplotlib when you do this. If you are somebody who really wants to be sure whether you should take an umbrella when you go out or not, maybe build a data weather pipeline. Either get the weather data from this API and save it to a local file or directly make API so you get the latest weather data for each city based on your input. So there is this open weather map API um, that you can check out for this, it's free. And you will learn different things like requests and pandas by following this project. There are a lot of batch datasets available online, like on Kaggle, on AWS open sets, or maybe Azure open datasets or Google open datasets. But one thing that I've noticed, which is hard to find is how do you find real time datasets? Because that's where complicated projects get built. I have a very good GitHub uh, link for this. It contains a lot of real time data sources that you can use for your project, both free and paid. There are different categories like finance, crypto, transportation, information, IoT, cybersecurity, and others. So I'm sure if you go through this, you will definitely find some data sets that's interesting to you. And then you can build a project on top of that. But as you work on a project, you will constantly learn new things. How do you make sure that you don't forget those things after some time? And just don't spend your time constantly relearning the already learned things that you did from previous projects. I have a very powerful trick for this. And it is inspired by the physicist Richard Feynman. Let's say that you just learned how to use pd.merge to combine two different datasets in Pandas. First, apply it. So you look at the solution online, look at the code and try to implement it in your project. Great. Second, explain it very simply. Open up a text file and just pretend like you're explaining it to your friend. Don't use any technical jargons or anything. Just keep everything simple and explain the concepts of pd.merge. You might want to write something like, okay, so merge is like having two lists. One has names and phone numbers, other has names and email addresses. The merge looks at the names on both lists and combines them. So now you have one big list with names, emails, and phone numbers all together. Third, identify the gap. So in your previous step, when you are explaining it briefly, if you run into any issues, like let's say you run into a wall and you can't explain it perfectly, then that's a knowledge gap. That's a gap that you've identified and then you can always go back, look at the documentation or maybe look up online about your concepts and then just repeat this process. So this process will move you away from just copy pasting different types of codes that you see online for your project and actually develop a deep lasting understanding. And that's it. Stop being a professional tutorials watcher and start being a professional problem solver because that is the skill that employers pay big bucks for. If you have any questions or thoughts or comments, feel free to drop it in the comment section below. If you found this video useful, then hit like and subscribe for more such videos about no-nonsense data career advice. That's it from my side. See you next time.